Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to start off a new series of lectures by discussing rationality. To frame this, I want to talk about the rationality of suicide terrorism. Specifically, can rational choice theory explain the behavior of suicide terrorists? For a little bit of background here, rational choice theory is a methodology that we use in the social sciences to explain social behaviors using uh, game theoretical and formal modeling tools. Now, the reason I brought up this specific question is that it's a common criticism of rational choice theory. So people will say rational choice theory requires rational actors and suicide terrorism is inherently irrational because these people want to blow themselves up and that's irrational. And so because of that, we can't use rational choice theory to study suicide terrorists. And if that's the case, then why are we studying rational choice theory at all? Why are we learning the tools such as game theory necessary to conduct rational choice theory research? And why is this stuff going into academic journals? Whenever I hear such a criticism, I really have to take a deep breath, inhale, exhale, and then try to calmly explain to the person that I'm talking to that their criticism of rational choice theory is absolutely incorrect, it's invalid, and it's absurdly awful. It's just wrong. The reason for this is that in rational choice theory, we're not actually talking about rationality in the way we define it in English uh, normally. So like in everyday language, the way we say rational isn't the way we talk about rationality in terms of a game theoretical or formal model analysis. At its core, rational choice theory is just trying to analyze the behavior of individuals who strategically try to achieve their best obtainable outcome. So for example, my most preferred outcome may be to take over the world. My least preferred outcome may be to die a painful death. And I prefer a bunch of things in between those two things. And you might have a similar set of preferences where your most preferred outcome is to take over the world. Your least preferred outcome is to die a painful death and a bunch of things in between there. And what we want to study is how my strategies and your strategies interact with one another when we are in a strategically dynamic setting. So we saw this, for example, in the stag hunt, where I want to hunt a stag only if you're hunting a stag, and I want to hunt a hare only if you're hunting a hare, and vice versa. So basically, what I want to do is dependent on what you want to do, and what you want to do is dependent on what I want to do. And so to go down even a layer deeper, we're basically looking at how preferences interact. And so like I said earlier, Rationality in this context does not mean sensibility. So uh, what I said earlier when I said that my most preferred outcome was to take over the world, my least preferred outcome was to die a painful death, what I said there was pretty sensible, right? I think your average person in the streets would tell you that they would rather take over the world than die a painful death. But I could also tell you that I want to die a painful death most of all, and least of all, I want to take over the world. That's obviously not very sensible, but that doesn't mean that I'm irrational. So the criticism of rational choice theory that we were discussing earlier, uh, I think that comes up from this fact that people uh, think of rationality in the everyday language way, the way that we mean it as a synonym of sensibility. And so they are using that as their criticism when in fact that's not how we are defining it in the discipline. So how are we defining it in the discipline? Well, we have four preference rules. We have completeness over preferences, transitivity over preferences, independence over lotteries, and continuity. And the game theoretical models that we use really only rely on these four axioms about preferences for everything to work out nice and neatly. And the first two here, completeness and transitivity, that's how we define rationality. If your preferences are complete and, you're transit and they're transitive, then you are a rational human being. So there's nothing in there about uh, blowing yourself up being inherently intransitive or incomplete. We'll get to the, each of these things in the next few videos of this lecture, so we'll look at each of these things one-on-one -on -one and look at what they mean. Now. To wrap up, I don't want to say that rational choice theory is not is perfect. It's not. There are many different ways of criticizing it. And in fact, in the next few videos, we'll be looking in each of these about, well, is completeness plausible? Is transitivity plausible? Do people actually display independence over lotteries or continuity? Um, and if that's not the case, then, you know, should we really be using this sort of stuff? That's the kind of stuff that we're going to be going over in the next few lectures. So. 
this is really two parts to it. First, I want to tell you about each of these things, and secondly, I want to be able to uh, give you the knowledge to be able to properly criticize rational choice theory. I don't want you to be making silly little arguments like saying suicide terrorists are inherently irrational because that's false. When you do criticize rational choice theory, I want to make sure you do so intelligently. So that's really what we're going to be looking at over the next few videos. Join me in the next video where we talk about completeness.